All right. We are here on Twitch Live. So excited. Hey, look who my guest is. Hey, it's me. It's me. <laughs> AM. You know me? I, like, I liked it. Your face was, I don't know if you realize this, but you were like. And that's I how thought my face is. So, for those of you who are wondering, uh, yes, we did allow AM to join me. This is A. a and, and I'm not even sure I say your last name right, but I can't oh. be alone in that. Uh, yeah. A, A.M. Grabaldi? Grobelny. So Grobelny. I'll teach you, like I, I taught my fourth grade class back okay. when I was a teacher. Uh, grow like a tree, ring a bell, and your knee, which you told me you're, you're having problems with. So I will never. I am, that's true. So, so Grabaldi. Grabelny. Grobelny, gotcha. All right. Oh, yeah. I, I won't remember that. Uh, ask Danilo. Oh. Because I haven't said Danilo or Danilo's name right since I've met him. So um, <laughs> just just to be clear, I'm not that smart. So, hey, I'm glad y'all are here. Uh, we're excited. I'm going to have a great time deciding if he's actually going to make it to the live presentation or not. Uh, but this is our 10th, are you counting? 10th episode of, of uh, Building Happy Little APIs, uh, a deep, deep dive into APIs on the AWS. We have covered a lot of stuff but this is the first time that we've had uh, am with us or am he said i could call him that it's okay um and and the first time his pictures actually invaded our our thing here so uh thrilled that y'all are here uh and uh you all right there buddy you have some neck issues i'm looking i'm looking it's oh yeah okay i got you all right that's fair uh, so am tell us a little about yourself so people know who you are most of them probably know you more than me but tell them anyway uh, I'm A.M. Gravelny. I'm a partner solutions architect here at AWS. I, I was formerly a developer evangelist here at AWS. Uh, prior to that, I worked at a little company called Box that does uh, storage that you might have used or might not have. Um, I am a non-traditional tech person. I, uh, I came from a background. I have an English degree. And I was a teacher for uh, a couple of years, and then at, at 25 years old, I decided I'm going to do this crazy tech thing. And I went and got a computer science degree, and uh, now I'm here. It's weird. It, I don't know how it all happened. So, <clears throat> so tell tell them what grade you taught. Oh, I taught fourth grade. Um, fourth grade children. It was a. Uh, it was harder than dev work. Yeah, that that to me, they're not even human until they're nine or ten. So teaching fourth graders, I can't even wrap. Now I have five kids. For those of you who follow along, I have five kids, and that's a lot. And I love my kids because my wife says I have to. But up until they're in junior high or high school, that's a struggle for me, man. So I applaud you. Uh, we do need fourth grade teachers. We need teachers. Great. So let me ask you this: Were you were you fun or mean or blend? I was a fun teacher. Um, okay. My 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 students nicknamed me Dr. G. Uh, I'm not I don't have a PhD. I'm not a doctor. They just decided one day to start calling me that, and I didn't stop them. So. <laughs> nice. I was yeah. So do you ever introduce yourself as Dr. G? Uh, no, nobody really calls me that anymore. It's just that class. I don't I don't know why. I I, I should bring back Dr. G. I guess. You can't right. name yourself. You can't give yourself a nickname. Uh, that's uh, that's crazy talk. All right, so we're gonna I'm looking at my I'm showing a whole world here. So we're gonna we're gonna get started with Dr. G. And you know I'm, I'm gonna say a little something that most people don't know about me uh, is I'm actually and I've told you this in my background I was a pastor for 12 years, and so uh, I'm actually a licensed minister. So I would like you to call me Reverend. So we'll be Dr. G and Reverend. I, I love this. This is great. These are like new personas for us. It will be the Red yeah. and Dr. G. It's also our band name. So, uh, yeah. So, all right. So, let's get started on what we're going to talk about here. Uh, today's session is, is if I can get my uh, PowerPoint to work here. There we go. Building Happy Little APIs, looking outward by fronting an external service with the Amazon API Gateway. And again, you see my wonderful guest, Dr. G, and I'm the Rev. And uh, these are our Twitter handles. If you want to follow these, you're not going to keep that straight, are you? Dr. G in the room. I'm going to change that while you're talking. I'm going to change that in the PowerPoint. Um, so 
Uh, so I want to kind of bring you up to speed. If, if you've never joined our session before, uh, we, we are really deep diving on API Gateway. Uh, API Gateway is a very powerful tool that you can use uh, in many different ways. I really encourage you on Twitch, and, and I'll be posting a link later. We have uh, all, all the episodes compiled in a list that you can look at or on a playlist. But we talk through each of the each of the you know, different superpowers of, of API Gateway, like you know throttling and caching and and WAF and you know routing and just you know and then on top of that all it, it's actually an API endpoint. So I mean it's, it does a lot um, and it's serverless. Um, so but today we're going to kind of climb into uh, you know fronting external services. So when we look at API Gateway, if you, if you remember this image, we show this a lot as we're going through uh, different ones. Uh, if you, you see this where API Gateway, if you think about API Gateway, you think about how do, how do you access API Gateway and what's behind it. And when you access it, it can be a private endpoint like we talked about last time with saying It can be uh, regional, it can be uh, edge optimized, all kinds of different things. But on the back side of it, it's what can you get to through API Gateway. And today's focus is the all publicly accessible endpoints. Uh, now, let me ask you this. Now, I, I have some lists, but Am, why would you do this? What, what are some advantages of doing this? Yeah, so I'll give you a real reason and uh, a fake reason. Um, Just like a fake. Two, two, two fakes and a real? Yeah, two, two, okay. two truths two, two, and two, a lie. Okay, yeah. gotcha. I have to give you a fake funny reason because it, I'm contractually obligated to do that. Uh, in all the Dr. G part. To, yeah, that's right. Uh, the real reason, so for example, I mentioned that I worked at Vox, right? So uh, the product that I worked on at Vox was enterprise facing. It, that's the primary customer that used uh, this product. And it was an API, right? So uh, you would interact with the API to, to take actions in, in Vox behind the scenes. And a lot of these companies, uh, they had their own standard APIs to find out for their content or storage layer already, right? They, they could not change it or didn't want to change it or they uh, really liked this comforting thought of, I can always switch services in the background, but my API layer will remain the same. So they were, they were a little hesitant to bake in a third party API directly into their applications. I mean, so instead they would wrap the API with something like API Gateway uh, and then, you know, have that manage those endpoints instead of their code managing those endpoints. All right, so that was your real one. That's my real one, yeah. What's your fake one? My fake one is what I'm going to show you today. I actually broke my cardinal rule of Twitch just for you, Eric. Just you for win, you. Right. Which is? The rev. Uh, the, the rev. Which is, I will do no prep before coming on a Twitch show. Uh, I, I refuse to prep, I refuse to build anything, I will just do it all. But I actually prepared content, I put it all together, just so I could come on your show. Dude, yeah, I, I run a pretty tight ship here. You do? Uh, I do have, I have uh, he's had to check in with me for over a year now, every, every week um, we've been checking in. And uh, no, that's not true. So now, Dr. G and the Rev, we fly by the seat of our pants. It's just who we are. Uh, but I appreciate you preparing for this, uh, and, and I'm prepared. excited. I, I got to be honest, that that I never prepare rule is is uh, a little scary. Um, I'm just gonna throw that out there. But not surprising. So no, no. So what I prepared for for your show today is uh, I go on I go on a few Twitch shows, right? And uh, one of the key things, if you're doing Twitch shows, this is this is good advice, free advice for you. Always pander to your host, always. Um, so I needed a service that I could switch out easily in the background, uh, so I could pander to whoever you know host that I'm with at that time. So we'll see that in just a few minutes, and then I'll break down how I actually made it uh, happen. Now, when you when you described this to me, you didn't say pander to the host. You said recognize your favorite developer. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. I'm so sorry. Um, let, me, let me start over. When you go on Twitch shows, you should really just show who your favorite developer is, right? There it is. So okay. in, in, in the DA group, developer advocate group, and there's there's quite a few of us now, we all work under Chris Munns, we have a point system, and you just lost about 10 points right there, because that was, that was a fail. Oh. Uh, 
Yeah. So I have so points to Ravenclaw. Yeah, so if you can see this, I don't know if you can see the screen or not there, uh, Am, uh, Dr. G, uh, but uh, I put up some reasons that, that why you would do this, and I'm going to list some others. One of the ones you you had, uh, I would follow, I would put that under service flexibility. Um, yeah, yes. I mean, to wrap in an external API uh, to, and, and not be reliant on it, you know, we, we hear a lot, you know, hey, we don't want to get locked in and we want to be able to change something like that. Um, one of the other, a couple of other reasons why you might do this is one is for service migration or the strangler pattern. Uh, and you might have, let's say, and, and I've talked about this in several episodes, but you might have an external API, like let's say you're running an API or, or a service, I'm sorry, uh, internally on premise. Uh, is it on premise or on premises? Well, I've always done on premise, but there's a debate. Uh, or I could just be wrong. Yeah, I think it's on premise. Anyway, at your own office in your mom's closet. And uh, so what? That's for, is it, okay. Did you just look it up? No. no. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what you could do with this, if you wrapped that with API Gateway, then you could slowly start moving services off of it. So the strangler pattern says slowly pulling stuff off until it's gone. But that would be one reason to wrap it. The other is splitting endpoints. Let's say you have two services that you want to look like one service. You, you have your own and maybe a third party or maybe three or four. If you wrap them with API uh, Gateway, you can have a single endpoint, but push to multiple endpoints behind it, right? So it's kind of a fan out of endpoints idea. Service flexibility that we talked about. And this last one is, uh, you know, is a usage compliant. A lot of times you're using a third party, third, third party uh, API endpoint. Let's say like, uh, let's say Google location services, right? So they have, they, they have a usage, uh, terms of use that say, hey, you can only cache it for, let's say, don't hold me to these numbers, but like 30 days. Or you can only hit it like, you know, 7.2 times a second or something like that, you know. Uh, and so so rather than having, rather than just, you know, passing that through blanket wise, you can actually control that at the API gateway. So th with things like caching and throttling and then you can use security with WAF. So there's a lot of reasons why you would want to wrap uh, an API gateway. And these are all real ones because I don't like to mess around with our viewers. I like to be serious with them. Uh, but AM obviously has a has a, um, a fake one that panders to the host. So we'll see what happens here. Um, so let's let's uh, let's see what we got here. Now, I, I kind of jump at the gun here, but if I remember right, you're building one that actually is a service that points to. Uh, yeah. Get, yeah. Get up. That's right. All right are, you, are you ready to take over? Yeah, yeah, I, I can talk about what I built. All right, let's do it. John, let's switch to, to Dr. G. John never gave me a code name, so that's his real name. He'd be Dr. J. Dr. J. Yeah. There can only be one doctor here. All right, there we go. Okay, uh, as, as I would like you to take note, Eric, I gave you your own path in my file system here. Dude, uh, you've already said the word pandering to your host, so it's you kind of that yeah that ship sailed. This is a really big deal. I want you to know, okay? Uh, so I set up an API endpoint, and this is my API endpoint, and uh, it kind of you know gets cut over there, but it says at the end of it slash am favorite coder, right? And so this service is going to return who my favorite coder is. Uh, and like I mentioned, as I as I go to different shows, I'm going to need to change out uh, how this service gets resolved. We, you know, we're going to talk about a scenario later where maybe I can't use GitHub. Maybe I need to use something else like Code Commit or maybe a nice AWS partner like GitLab. Wink, wink, wink. Uh, so we'll Super see. Cool. But, but this one, uh, this is my service that I built so that I can always tell who is my favorite coder, uh, no matter what. So should we call it? Let's do it, because I know what it's okay. going to say. All right, so here we go. Let's find out who it is. Should I? I'm just going to curl. All right, and it's me. It's me. Whoops. Wait a minute. I would never give out this information no. just <laughs> without any kind of authorization. All right? So. No. We're going to get into why I put authorization on this as well, uh, but we'll need to add a header. I used a, uh, you can use any arbitrary header that you want. I just used this password header, and I made the password 
super secret. Nice. All right. Look, look at you live coding in curl. You're brave. Oh, yeah. It was brave. Brave's a word for it. So <laughs> now we're going to see who is my favorite coder. Who does that say? Dude, <laughs> we're never, ever going to hear the end of this. Dude, this is going to be a week of, I got called out, I got called out. <laughs> oh, I, I, this must be from something else. I don't know. Look, I don't know. I don't know what happened. That. I don't know what happened. Um, we need to fix this, okay? <laughs> Dude. Okay. To pause for a minute. In the prep on this, he told me it was going to be me because I made him prep. Maybe that's why. In the prep, it was going to be me, not Richard. And and yeah, now it's this. So yeah, for anyone watching, I put in Richard Boyd's name because uh, Richard and uh, I don't know Eric have this this feud going it seems, and so uh, I really loved it, and uh, I made it. I made it uh, incendiary. That's what I did. I've just seen it. Yeah. Well, I'll look, leave. I want to fix this, Eric. I want to fix this. Okay. I don't think I can, but maybe, maybe we John, can actually fix the problem. John, if, if you, if, I'm going to give you the word. You pull his, pull his feed when I say. <laughs> I told you I'm getting kicked off this show. Oh yeah. I'm do I'll spend the rest of the hour just doing stupid one for your tricks. <laughs> So, all right, Dr. G, show us how it's really done. All right, so I'm going to fix this, and then we can go in depth on uh, the type of things that, that enables this sort of integration, right? So I've got my API here. I'm logged into the AWS console. Uh, I'm in API Gateway, right? So anybody who is uh, is new to AWS, you just find it with API Gateway, right? So now, you can show us how you set up this external API. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, I guess we could create it from scratch if we wanted to, but but I, I don't know if there is really much value to doing that. We'll just come in. Show, I'd like to yeah, we'll just show what I've already built. Yeah, see the, I've got see this the endpoint, and we can see it's pointing to the GitHub API, right? And it's it's set to our endpoint right now for some reason. I think Richard maybe hacked me. I don't know. Um, Dude, no. He he lives by all PRs, good PR. So so I uh, what I'm going to do here is this is a resource in API Gateway, right? Uh, I've got a method on that resource which is get, which is how I was able to call uh, this endpoint, right? With a curl, uh, just a regular get call. I've got a custom authorizer here. We'll get into this a little bit more, uh, but. Really, where I'm going to change how this points to Richard right now uh, is right in here. So I'm doing a pass-through integration type of HTTP where API Gateway will forward on the request that I made to whatever endpoint I gave it. And if I come in here and I put in this instead, this probably will give us the right answer now. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop you right there. Okay. Can you edit that again? Hit the pencil. Yes. Uh, one of the biggest things, and it's something uh, in feedback, but just so y'all know, when you edit something here and you put in the right name instead of the wrong name, which is what Dr. G just did, that X right there, or that, that check mark, you have to hit that to update. I see a lot of people fill that in and then move off the page and then wonder why it doesn't work. So I know that's very minor, but you'd be surprised how many times it catches folks. So you got to confirm the change. Um, and this is what we call an upgrade. So, and then, uh, yeah, if you could, yeah. Uh, we might uh, change this to ST hold later too. So I don't know. Here's the other, here's the other thing that always gets me. Uh, if I go back right now, guess what's going to happen? Oh, uh, yeah. It's still Richard. Yeah, well, it's dude, you're going to feel that way for the rest of your life. But uh, So here, there was a serious question asked. If, if I do that edit on single digit, can I hit enter or just the check? Do, will enter do it? I don't know. Let's, uh, sure. let's, let's try another one of my favorite coders. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Now just... Enter did not. Okay, did not enter is a no bueno. But I can do tab enter maybe. Yeah. There you go. All right. There tab you go. and enter. Tab. Okay. All right. And we're going to switch that back, right? 
Thank yeah. You. Did, did anybody, you my, uh, my handle, single digit? I love that. I love anybody who was wondering who Nikki is. That's Nikki Stone. Another. Right. We've been on the show oh. already. I, I have Has she been on your show? Oh yeah, I, I yeah. When she wasn't available again and nobody else at Amazon was, I called you. Okay, that's fair. It's fair. That's that's how I've gotten everything actually at Amazon. Yeah. If Nikki's not available, they settle for me. All right. So so tell us why. So you tried it, still didn't work. Why? Because I actually haven't deployed my API. So with API Gateway, you have to actually deploy. And you have to deploy a certain stage, too. You can have different stages of the API as well. Uh, you notice that in that, uh, that URL here, I've got this V2. Yeah. It's the actual stage identifier. Uh, so there's a V1. Uh, if we click deploy, it'll show me what stages I can deploy to. I can even create a new stage. But I'm going to do V2. All right. And I'm yep. going to deploy. There you go. Moral yeah. of the story is if your API isn't working, deploy a lot. Well, not every time, but if you made a change, you think you <laughs> Sorry, that's false. Uh, just redeploy it. Uh, that's, that's the equivalent of restarting it, I guess. But no, if, if your changes aren't showing, make sure you've deployed it. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so I think, I think we bought enough time. Uh, there will be some caching and things. Uh, maybe if I talk just long enough, we'll see. Single digit come up. There you go. Yes. There you go. There it is. All right. And so I want to show something too about this, right? So as as Eric mentioned earlier, sorry, the rev. As he mentioned earlier, uh, you've got concerns around things like throttling, caching, right? So downstream. GitHub actually does impose a throttle. So GitHub is uh, one of these APIs. I, I'd say it's pretty rare. Uh, you can actually set up GitHub, uh, or you can interact with the GitHub API without a, a token, right? There's no authentication needed. But they, they have a very uh, restrictive throttling uh, right. setting on that if you were doing that, right? So uh, I think it's something like 60 calls per hour if you're not authenticated. We're actually making authenticated calls to GitHub, and I'll show you how uh, when we start talking about our custom authorizer. But let's say we weren't, and we're going to run into that uh, that throttle. You know, as as I'm making calls to uh, to get my favorite coder single digit, not Richard Boyd. Uh, so I need to enable the API cache. Uh, as, as an option here, right? So we've got two options. We can actually match the throttle, uh, which, which I'm not sure we can actually match to that 60 per hour. Um, we could throttle this down to one per second, but still that's not going to meet it. Uh, instead, what I would do in this scenario is uh, I would create a cache, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm missing out on chat, aren't I? I'm sorry. Yeah. So when somebody said, well, you know, we said blink, blink twice at the rev is forcing you to say that. That was funny. So. <laughs> uh, so what's great about this too is you can set the, the, the cache TTL. Um, and, and I think there's a maximum of uh, an hour, right? So you'd set it in seconds. So Eric could essentially hold on to the, the title of my favorite coder for at least an hour, right? Before uh, I, I see that change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a win. <laughs> so I'm not going to set this, but I could, right? And that would be a way to uh, work against something like downstream throttling from the service that you're calling. It yeah. could be another way of, uh, if you have information that's not changing on a regular basis, I'm probably not going to switch my favorite coder all that often. Uh, probably only when I get invited to shows, right? Just like I said, pander to your Twitch host. Uh, yeah. So if you're on Richard's show, I expect my name to come up first. <laughs> oh, well, obviously, for sure. Just to be clear. OK. I think that's only fair. Because you'll never be on this show again. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm still. Uh, yeah, I'm, so am I. <laughs> John, I gave John the cue quite a few times. It hadn't happened, so. Oh, that's great. Thank you, John. No, nope, no, nope, that doesn't work. Nope. All right, so uh, 
uh, another question, another thing I was thinking about, another reason that we did throw out there is logs and tracing, as I was looking at this. And, and, and if you want to flip over the tab, you can. Well, another reason to to be to use a wrapper API on a third party service is you can get access to log and tracing that you wouldn't on the third party. You know what I mean? So you can monitor if you're doing some internal things. Uh, you know, you can do some X-ray, all kinds of things. But uh, specifically, the one that I think comes in handy is you know the access logging. Um, well, in, any of them, so that you can you can follow who's using these uh, from an internal, and you can't get at that if you're doing a third party. Sorry, I just wanted to throw that out there while I was thinking about it. No, that's great, yeah. Um, the other thing, too, about fronting a third-party service is uh, I mentioned that you can use GitHub without a token, uh, but I'm actually using it with a token, right? Uh, but it's a token that I generated. So uh, it's not necessarily one that I would want to propagate out and let just anybody use, right? Uh, but I'm also not going to be able to authenticate people uh, to their GitHub account, right? I'm going to need some sort of third-party authentication system. Now, for this uh, example here, I made it the password header, right? Uh, which is not any kind of best practice. This is this is just demonstrative to show that you can do this, right? But in reality, what I would do is I would connect up whatever authentication system, maybe I'm using JWT or, or, or JSON web tokens, right? right. Um, and I would investigate that uh, token to see if this person was granted access to list out my favorite coder, right? And then I would continue to make that call. And how you do that is with a custom authorizer, right? And these are really powerful. Um, these fire any time that you detect a token source in the header, Right, uh, so I set that as I mentioned to password, but I could come in here and change this to be the more normal authorization header. Right, uh, you can even have like some sort of token validation come in here and you know gives you a regex that you can then uh, check to see if if it's even close before it'll even invoke the lambda that you then fulfill uh, and and either grant or deny access. Um, so do you want to take a look at that code? Eric? Yeah, I, I would like to. Yeah, because I want to kind of talk through and, and what you're doing on, on exactly why we did this. Uh, yeah. Get, 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 uh, and if you want to pop up the code, one of the things, when we were kind of preparing this, when I forced him to prepare, so it was such a new experience for him. Uh, but we were talking through, because uh, the question was, why don't we just, from API Gateway, hit a Lambda and have Lambda do the call and come back? That way we don't have to do anything on the client side or really. But the, but the reality is, and, 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 and I've said this before, Jay Nair said this, that you use Lambda to transform, not transport. That's, I'm, I'm presently needle pointing that in a pillow. I, I think it's awesome. Um, and so what we didn't want to do is just use Lambda if we didn't really need it. Uh, and I know, you know, for, for all the joking around, I know we've got some VTL experts in the room. Uh, and so, not you, I was not referring to you, <laughs> Dr. G. Uh, yeah, I was talking to other folks. Uh, hey, that picture got better. And so, uh, but a lot of times you can do things, and, and you've seen throughout the series, you, you can do things at API Gateway that you don't have to have a Lambda. Now, being on the serverless team, I, you know, I'm a Lambda fan. I'm not against Lambda at all. I, I love Lambda, you know, but I don't want to utilize it if I don't have to. And so I challenged uh, Dr. G here to go back and say, okay, how do we do it without that? Uh, and, and now, yeah, go for it. Show them what you got. Yeah, uh, Eric laid down this arbitrary and uh, uh, limiting challenge uh, of authority. not using any Lambda integration and only calling a service, right? And, and I mentioned to him when he said this, like, you know, most services, most, most third-party APIs are going to make you authenticate, right? Uh, how do we handle that? And so first thing that popped into my mind was a custom authorizer, right? Because in essence, you are authorizing the person to use this third party API, right? So how you do that in your Lambda code in this custom authorizer is up to you. I would, you know, I think industry standard way of doing this would be to uh, pull in a JWT token from the authorization header, right? Uh, inspect that JWT token against whatever certificate was signed, right, or, or third party, maybe using uh, another AWS partner, Auth0, for example, 
you can use that to verify that the JWT token is valid. And then you can inspect that JWT token to see if the uh, you know, specific grants for whatever service you're calling have been granted, right? So uh, I didn't do that in my, my, my uh, custom authorizer, but I'll show you the code here of what I did do. And uh, it's not leaking any secrets either, which is great. Uh, you know, sure. that, that's, that's always a, a fear when you're doing a live stream is, uh, oh, I don't want to expose my, my GitHub token or, you know, any, any kind of secrets here. So in order to facilitate that, I used one of the most wonderful services. Yes. A lot of secrets this makes manager. me happy. Yes. So secrets manager. And I'll show you how I made this uh, Lambda reusable when we switch over to using GitLab next, too. All I have to do is change an environment variable. It's really nice. slick. I think. I think it's kind of slick. So I'll walk you line by line here. I'm pulling in that secret password, which it's just equal to super secret, as I just showed you all when I called the service, right? So this is getting that data, that value from uh, Secrets Manager. It comes in, checks the authorization token coming into the uh, into the custom authorizer, right? So when I make a call against that URL and I include that authorization header or that password header that I arbitrarily picked, that'll send it to the Lambda on the event object under authorization token. So if these don't match, right? So I'll show you exactly what I mean. If I come in here and I change just a letter in the password, if they don't match, I'm unauthorized, Boom. right? All right, so we have That's, to in. Is this a good spot to interrupt you? Absolutely. Now, that I've, now that I've done it, because I yes. interrupted you to ask. Yeah, you so already did. question, and it's a good question. When would I use Secrets Manager versus SSM Parameter Store? Oh. A very, a very common question to ask, I think. That, that's, that's, I think, a very common concern for a lot of people. Yeah, um, we just, we just had a good, uh, so, yeah, we just had someone post. There's, there is, uh, uh, you know, SSM with Secrets Manager, uh, or SSM or Secrets Manager. Uh, what's your opinion, Ann? Yeah, so um, I would say number one, parameter store is not necessarily. Uh, it's good for, for storing things that don't need to be encrypted for just like common configuration uh, type values. Uh, but anything that is sensitive, I would say qualifies for Secrets Manager. Another thing is Secrets Manager probably, uh, I, I think, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think it has a higher threshold of uh, request limiting uh, or, or throttling against it than Parameter Store does. But Secrets Manager also costs money, uh, whereas Parameter yeah. Store doesn't, right? So, so, and then the last thing is you can you can store secret, you know, things that need to be encrypted in Parameter Store store yeah. as well. But then you manage the encryption at that level. So you have to decrypt. You have to manage the key uh, either through KMS or your own, you know, uh, encryption keys. So Secrets Manager just has that built into it. Yeah, so yeah, and, and I was actually thought you were saying that you couldn't encrypt on parameter store, which I was gonna have to go, oh, yeah, John, yeah. John. Get yeah, so, uh, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, and, and generally my answer is Secrets Manager is, is it does a lot more. Uh, it'll handle password rotating if you're running like RDS or something like that, if you have a compatible service. Uh, and so that helps, that helps a lot. For most of my work, when I'm dealing with web work, things like that, parameter store is going to cut it because I can do encrypted. Uh, you can also connect directly, and, and I'm sure call me out if I'm wrong on this, but you, you can direct, connect directly to parameter store via the templates. So and, and handle some unencryption. So uh, so there's a lot of power there, but Secrets Manager is going to do a lot more. Uh, but yeah, that breakdown is going to help. Um, and Simon's also answering some questions on here uh, to help out. But yeah, I, I appreciate you calling that out. Cool. Great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's 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 something I hear almost every time between Secrets Manager and Parameter. Sure. When do I use which? Um, uh, cool. So uh, if you know the password, we then move along into this API key secret. Because I told you, we're actually making authenticated calls to GitHub, right? So we have to pull that secret out of uh, Secret Manager. Got to get that token. 
Uh, and then I'm doing something interesting here. I think this is kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is one of those instances of something that's too clever, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what I, your I opinion is. I doubt that. Uh, it's like sorry, one of those. That, like, was, that was my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean like, uh, like clever in a bad way. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, uh, as you construct your policy that either allows or denies, we're setting allow here uh, that, that constructs that, and that's what we return from the custom authorizer. You can also pop in on this dot context object too, and you can load in arbitrary values in here that you want. So I'm actually loading in the API key to GitHub on this, and then I'm going to use VTL to transform my integration request to use this hey. uh, authorizer.context.key. So we'll see right. that when I switch back. All right. So if I go back to my resources, I go back to my git call, I've got the method request, and I think I'll take just a second. Method request and integration request, what's the difference, right? Um, oh, okay. Met you asking me or are you going to tell it? I'm asking you, actually. I, I right. was going to take it, but I think you should take it. Okay, so the method request is the, the, it's, it's the request coming in, right? So it's, uh, for instance, you know, it's, it's, it's coming in from API Gateway. The, the what did you ask the other one, the integration request? Yeah, what's yeah. that? So that is the request to the service behind. Uh, and you may give more detail than that. Yeah. So, I mean, you can pick a lot of things. Uh, uh, a lot of the AWS services are directly integrated with uh, API Gateway. So you just select that as the integration request. This is what takes that method request coming in to your API Gateway from your client and then transforms it to whatever you're then going to send as your backend fulfillment of that API. Might just be a mock endpoint too, right? Like you can use this for testing too. Um, so what I did, I mentioned, I, I became uh, familiar with VTL just enough to write two lines of it. Nice. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is remember in that Lambda, that custom authorizer, I am actually setting dot key, right? And that is pulled off of context.authorizer.key. So I'm setting a variable here in VTL to this auth override. And so when I get to the integration request portion, it's going to override the authorization header and add in that value right there, right? So what this allows me to do is now I can manage that API token directly in Secrets Manager. Right, so I can rotate that token without having to change my API layer at all. My API layer is always going to pop in that bearer and whatever token I'm sending in from that custom authorizer. All right, do we have any questions so far? I can't pull up chat since I'm, I'm shut. Uh, we're watching it here. Sorry, I was grabbing some information on and I was verifying you can directly connect to an SSM parameter inside of a same template. So, oh, cool. uh, yep. Actually, That's not, yeah. Here we go. All right. So now it's there's just some conversation about some some documentation. Method request is what exposes to the user. Integration re request is what's exposed to the backend. That's good. Yep. Uh, so yep. Like I told you, yeah, Richard Boyd is our resident VTL nerd. So <laughs> and I mean that you know, I would give him a Dr Pepper if he were sitting here. There you go. Not yeah. Though. So this is essentially just transforming the request that's getting made to GitHub, right? Yep. And that's that's all I need to do. And that's how it it, it sets the auth header. That's how it makes an authenticated call uh, directly to the, the GitHub API. And then it just passes back uh, whatever GitHub responds with. Right. Right. Basically proxies it. That's right. So I also mentioned that we could we could actually completely pull in a different service, right? Like right. We, could, so, we could just swap out and use a, a different third-party API now if we wanted to. 
So, so if GitHub were to, and I'm not saying I want this to happen, but Microsoft tomorrow said, hey, we're shutting it down. What do we do? Well, you'd switch over, or you wouldn't even switch over. You'd already be using this because it's a great product. Uh, GitLab, right? You, you could right. use a, another third-party service. I could still call out and find out who's my, uh, my favorite coder uh, and point to their GitLab account. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know your GitLab, GitLab account, but I've got one. I, I don't have one, yeah. So you, so you yourself are your favorite coder on GitLab? Yeah, this is actually going to make me seem really, really egotistical, which I'm okay with. It's all yeah, right. I'm, and I'm, I think it's realistic. Yeah. So I just need to change, one, the endpoint that I'm calling, right? Because I'm going to be calling a new API now. Right. right? Yeah. Uh, and then two, I mentioned, right, we're going to pull a different secret manager. So how are we going to do that? Well, I've got a, uh, a environment variable set, right? So if I scroll down just a little bit, I've okay. got my API key secret stored here in GitHub underscore API underscore key, right? Okay. I've got another one called GitLab. Look at you. So as soon as I save this, this is going to start pulling from that secret instead, right? So you see process.env API key secret, right? It's going to insert now instead of GitHub, GitLab. Does that make sense? Yep, so you change the API endpoint. So you could conceivably save the API endpoint in, in Secrets Manager as well if you wanted to. But yeah, so you change the API endpoint and where to, and what key to grab. That's right. So now I need to come in here and edit this, right? And I'm going to cheat and go look at my notes. All right, no, that's not cheating. Let's see, what do we got? What do we got? Here it is. This is the endpoint that we're going to call. All right. Whenever I'm on a show with Nikki, she memorizes everything. She does Yeah. Have well, Nikki's a lot smarter than you or I. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'm all right with that. All right. So. I, I click the check mark. What else do I have to do? Uh, well, I would say you're good to go, except for you got to deploy. Got to deploy. You were trying to stump me on that one. It gets me every time, man. I swear. Got to deploy. All right. So it's still checking for the same password, right? Literally, on my client, nothing has changed, right? Which so was I did, Right. Uh, I, so downstream from my API, I had to make no changes. I only changed my API layer and that custom authorizer. That's it. Nice. So if I give it a minute, it probably, there you go. All right. Wow, that is so arrogant. Super arrogant. Who's AM's favorite coder? It's AM. That's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so the, so the goal here was to build a service that you could point pretty much anywhere you want without having to change the client, which which I find is, is a lot of times more common than we want to admit. Uh, you know, especially when you're thinking about uh, like IoT devices, that you've already deployed devices that you can't go out and change them. Or uh, you know, lots of things. So, so when you need an API endpoint, but you have to change the service behind it, this is the way to go. What are you changing now? Are you going back to GitHub? Oh, are you just making points now? What are you doing? I am. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm deploying back to uh, my real favorite coder. Oh, gotcha. You could have done that on V1. My real favorite coder here. Let's see. Let's see if it's swapped yet. Yep, there you go. Nice. Nikki Stone. I mean, she's just she's better than both of us. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, put together, really honestly. All right. Uh, so picks up some changes for the. Okay, so we have a question. It's interesting that after the variable was changed, the API broke. So it picks up some changes before the API. But you changed. All right. So he was changing the variable in the lambda, right? That's right. 
That's right. right. So when he when he saved the lambda, that's not part of the API gateway. So yeah. that went into effect right away. The that's better right. way to do this, and I'm not trying to tell Dr. G his stuff, but the better way to do this would be obviously a CI CD. Uh, but let's say you're doing it from home and you want to push, then what you could do is you could do a, uh, a deploy with a SAM template. That would push the change to Lambda, it would push the variable changes, and it would deploy the API all at the same time. So you might have like, uh, you, know, some, you might have a split second where they don't match up, but usually not. You could even get crazy and do a canary release where you only deploy it to a small amount of pe folks' traffic, and then it switches it over, so. Uh, yes. What other questions? Abe, do you have anything else you're going to show? I mean, that's that's legitimately how you would do that. Is you would point as you like as you deployed out that that lambda, you would uh, gradually move traffic over uh, once everything settled down, uh, like canary, like you were saying, right? Um, yep. that, that's that's how you legitimately do this. Um, I was going to show too if if you uh, really want to make anybody who's into declarative. Uh, uh, workflow for for uh, infrastructure really really mad. You can do this with uh, some CLI calls too. Uh, yeah. So you could come in, create a deployment. Uh, or sorry, this is out of order. You would first do update integration, uh, and then you could do these things over the CLI yep. where you do these patch operations, where I would replace this JSON path of slash URI with uh, single digit there, right? So uh, you've got options, right? But you the do. best course is a change set through CloudFormation, my opinion. Yeah. So so there's also a comment on here by Phil Simon, who's Simon, uh, where you could use pen labels or version numbers on the Lambda from API Gateway. Absolutely you could. That's another way to do it. Uh, I generally, and, and that's a totally valid way, I generally stay clear of that because I'm not smart enough to manage versions and aliases. I would rather the system handle it for me. And so when you push when you push with SAM or you push with CLI, SAM's my preference, or uh, or a CICD in a cloud formation release, uh, it, it can handle, especially if you do like what we call safe deploy, which maybe, maybe we need to do a session on that at some point, uh, which would be fun. But with a safe deploy, you can actually tell it, uh, again, like a canary release where we say do 10% of my traffic to version A and 90% to version B if, and do it for 10 minutes. If version A uh, is good, then repoint it all and all my traffic goes to it. And so the system actually handles your aliases and your versions and all that for you. But it is an absolutely valid way of, of handling that. I just feel like it, yeah, I'm not smart enough for it. So. Uh, I tend to stay with uh, things that I am less likely to break. <laughs> uh, that's that's the you know so same reason that I'm only allowed to use styrofoam at home. I, I don't get the china when we have Thanksgiving. So there it is. <laughs> Recognize your problems and deal with them. You know what I'm saying. So well, that's about it for what we're showing on this. Unless we have uh, questions, <laughs> latest is evil. Some opinionated folks on this. So, hey, John, can we go back to my uh, PowerPoint here when you get a chance? Yeah, let's switch back to, to Eric. Yeah, and I'm going to pop it up here. Yeah. All right, so here's what we talked about. We showed the code here, and then we talked about what if, what if uh, GitHub went away tomorrow. Uh, we could switch to GitLab. We'd be like, no problem. We showed the code on that. Uh, we've also answered some questions, so very excited about that. Um, I can't see the chat, so I am. If you're if you're watching the chat at the moment, it'd be great to, do we have any other questions coming in? Uh, no, I don't think so. Not yet. Okay. So CDK CDK rocks. Shout yeah, out. yeah, we got a lot of that. CDK is great. If you're not familiar with CDK, it is the uh, cloud developer kit, uh, and it it allows you to. to it's it's a different way of doing. Uh, you know, architectural, you know, infrastructure is code. Uh, it's, it's more code than, than templating. So uh, very cool. So next session uh, is on September 26th. Uh, this will be episode number 11. This one goes to 11. Uh, if you get that reference, you're old. And uh, we're going to be talking about containers, Amazon API Gateway containers and you. Uh, Amazon API Gateway isn't just for serverless. Uh, you can use it as we proved today. It can be used for a lot of different things. So uh, I do have a host 
although this is TBD, I'm blocking that down, but I do have a host that's working with that. These are Twitter handles. Uh, this is uh, Dr. G and I'm the Rev. And uh, we have been thrilled to have you here. And uh, till next time, this is uh, Building Happy Little APIs. And if we don't, do we have any more questions there, Dr. G? Let's see. Nope. Oh, All right. Is that a cucumber? Wrapped what? In uh, is that? No, it's not a cucumber tree. Um, I have no idea what that is. I just thought it was pretty. <laughs> All, right. So. All right. AM, thank you for joining me. All kidding aside, you've been a great host. You were fun to work with. Uh, and, and I love your haircut. So that's cool. Yeah. And, we got uh, the, same, the same person, right? What's that? We go to the same stylist. We do. Yeah. Hair. Yeah. Same stylist. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, very pretty. Thanks for taking your hat off so that people knew what I was talking about. So uh, I don't know if you know your glasses are blue, but they are. So there's a lot of uh, pizza and pineapple emojis. Does yeah. that mean anything to yeah. you? There's, I, I'm going to have to start banning some people because, yeah. Yeah. That's, I can already, I don't even have to read it. I know what it's saying. There should not be pineapple on pizza. That is authoritative. If you'll remember last uh, session, Sang Kong was with us. He is from Hawaii, and he said that is not Hawaiian. It's not legit. It is a farce. Uh, I also have Danilo and Alex, uh, both of which I say their names wrong. I'm pretty sure I get Alex right. They are Italian. They also say that there should be no pineapple on pizza. So with that, Dr. G, I'm the Rev. We're signing off. And we're out of here. Have a good day, guys. And Bye. gals. I made the whole